Welcome to the Open Ventilator Systems Initiative. My name is Joel Renner-Sophie and I have been working with this consortium uh, for the last two weeks. We have a working prototype that meets the government call out for a rapidly manufactured ventilation system. This is the open source uh, ventilator. We uh, have a constant pressure delivery system. So we start off with the compressor. The compressor delivers air. And this air then passes, goes through a safety valve, after which we have pressure regulator. Um, this works by allowing the compressor to run at a steady state and it diverts flow either to the patient or away from, uh, away from the system, such that there's a constant pressure maintained throughout the system. Uh, the flow goes out into a settling tank and this uh, allows the uh, buffering of the pressure to make it even more precise. Once it comes from the buffer tank, it then goes into the solenoid control valve. This solenoid control allows uh, inhalation, exhalation control as well. After that, that goes into a mixing chamber. The mixing chamber allows there to be a uniform concentration of oxygen. It goes past a flow meter into the patient for delivery. Then once it comes back from the patient, it goes into an exhalation valve. This allows a better control of the PEEP pressure. Just in case as a safety measure at the exit, have a PEEP valve. This design has a number of unique properties. Firstly, it makes use of readily available components that could be sourced anywhere around the world. It is also relatively close, low cost, and also can be manufactured rapidly and actually relies on this kind of mechanically controlled uh, approach. And this is interesting for a number of reasons. Firstly, we're looking at how we can actually minimize the effort and the time to meet regulatory standards. Um, so by using widely available parts as possible and also by using this mechanical control approach. And the other comp important component is actually thinking about can we use parts that can be sourced around the world. So this allows it not just to be used perhaps in the UK, um, but also anywhere in the world where you might have even uh, fewer ventilators and it is actually increasingly harder to access the technologies and the manufacturing capabilities. So we're looking not just at the design, but how we need how this maps to both the, science, uh, the supply chain, the regulatory issues, and also how this can be manufactured and actually distributed to the people that need it most. What I normally do is research new fluid mechanics for jet engines and gas turbines trying to improve efficiency. But what I've been helping this team on, on the ventilator project, is deal with some of the fluid dynamics problems in it. The design that we've come up with is inherently safe because of its simple architecture and its mechanical control. And what I've been doing in that is designing some of the components so that we can regulate the pressure to very precise and stable values so that then it can be delivered to the patient very reliably. So this means that we can use it both in the UK and in other countries where it might be harder to maintain or get hold of more complex and expensive components. So another aspect of the design of this ventilator system is that because it's so simple, it makes it very cheap to make all of the parts. So because we can understand the fluid mechanics inside the system itself, and we can design them to be stable and safe, that means we can make them simpler and cheaper and easier to make and more readily available for everyone. We had to make everything in the lab ourselves. Safety critical systems like safety valves, pressure regulators, and solenoid valves, throttle controllers, flow meters, that's, that's all been made, tested, and shows compliance and compatibility with ventilator requirements. Which means that this ventilator, when assembled anywhere in the world, you could print it yourself. You could make it there, you could get the supply chain, you have the open source designs. And that means that the accessibility of this ventilator to globally is much better than most others. ProDrive are an engineering consultancy with skills across mechanical, electrical, controllable software. We're sporting the prototype demonstrator here from the uh, Open Ventilator project by taking this prototype through the steps to get closer to a production part that could be ordered, manufactured and assembled in the UK or other places in the world. What makes our project different is our inclusive innovation approach. At least half the world's population doesn't have access to ventilators at all. We're changing this by designing machines that are one-tenth of the cost but equally as good as ventilators that are used here in Europe. We're also designing to address such challenges that might be faced in developing countries, such as not having piped oxygen 
or perhaps having intermittent or unreliable electricity supplies. And we've worked with medics and engineers in Ethiopia, Kenya and Uganda to make sure the design is exactly what's needed in those countries. Ultimately, it will be possible to build and maintain the ventilators in country, which will contribute to job creation there and enhance the resilience of health systems in the long run. The project that I'm involved with, colleagues from Cambridge, is really awesome. In Africa, we have a phrase called Ubuntu, which means togetherness and being one. For me, it's, it's the Ubuntu of ventilation. That's everything. I'm happy to be part of this project, and I really pray and hope that um, we can have 100,000 Ubuntu ventilators in Africa, saving lives uh, in patients who have acute respiratory failure for any reason.